Shut up and sit down. Well, everybody, my name is Paul Abernathy, and I'm the founder and CEO of Electrical Code Academy Incorporated. Now, we're a Texas corporation, and we're dedicated to teaching the National Electrical Code, as well as consulting services for engineers and electricians all over the country when it comes to the National Electrical Code. Now, I've served on many code panels. I currently serve on the NEC uh, Code Making Panels 5 and 17, uh, and I've done that for quite a few cycles now. And one of my passions is not just showing people how to pass an exam. What I like to do is make sure that you fundamentally understand the National Electrical Code so that you can apply it on a day in and out, day out basis. And that's the difference because you could do weekend crash courses. You could spend over $1,000 on a program that really has no guidance, no instruction element to it. Um, and you can buy just books that will be very cheap but there's nobody there to tell you why it's right or wrong or what you really need to know. They're just questions. So I created a program that was designed to not only give you this instructing influence, but also give you that stress level testing by online exam questions. Uh, they really make you dissect everything. And so that is what we call a proper study plan. But that's not why you're here. You're here at this video because you want to see how you should properly tackle an exam when your butt's in the seat inside of the test center. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to use a method that I call the three waves method. Now, some people might call it the three pass method, but there is a process to it. Now, we're assuming that you put in the time, whether it's on the hands on type training, whether you've learned from other journeymen or apprentices that have learned from masters and journeymen. However, you've accumulated this amount of knowledge, there's a proper way to use that knowledge when taking an exam, okay? So I'm gonna go over the process with you and let you see what I call the three wave method, okay? So again, there's a right way to tackle an electrical exam and I call it the three wave methods. Again, many people might call it the three pass method, but I call it the success rules for taking an electrical exam because there's a right way and a wrong way to do these things, all right? So First thing is, again, remember, we're gonna talk about it. It's the three wave method, and we're gonna be breaking that down, all right? All right, so the very first thing that we're gonna be tackling is called wave one. Now, this is when you first get in there. Now, remember, when you sit for an exam, there's gonna be a little introduction uh, process that you have to go to that teaches you how to learn all the features, like how you mark a question for later, um, it'll ask you some basic questions to make sure that you are ready, you're relaxed, and you're ready to take this exam. And, and that's the key thing. Relax. At this stage, you're either ready or you're not. Okay? So like it says on the screen, it says, in this stage, you're answering as many questions as possible that you can based on your hard work, your previous study habits, and just trade knowledge you've gained through the course of your on-the-job training all the way up to this point. It all culminates right here. Now, you've hopefully got a good night's sleep. You realize that you can't cram everything in it the night before. You've followed a good study plan, like our fast tracks, for example, and you are ready because at this stage, you're ready or you're not ready, all right? So we're gonna assume you are ready. You put in the work, okay? Now, when you're going through it, this is when you first open up your, the exam, you turn it on, you go through the introduction, you, you make sure you know how to work all the features, click the right answer. You'll get a bunch of things like, what color is the sky? It'll say blue, for example. Once you get familiar with that, make sure you're also familiar with the marking system. So you'll answer a question uh, and you'll go to the next question, but there's a little uh, tick ability to mark it so that you can come back to the ones that you've marked later. We want you to use that function in the wave method. Now, if you're taking a test that's still a written test or some kind of old antiquated testing process somewhere in the country, then do the same thing, but mark the question number down on a scratch piece of paper, because you're gonna be going back to those questions specifically. But if you have a marking system, and most of the tests today do, like PSI or ICC's type of things, they're going to have the ability to mark a question. All right, so you're sitting in your seat, you're ready to take this exam. Now, let me tell you something. It never fails. 
the first or second question that you get on an exam blows your mind. You're like, oh, wait a minute. I didn't study for this. Oh my God, the rest of this day is going to be awful. Relax. If you hit that first question out of the gate or second question out of the gate that just goes, oh no, I'm not ready. You are ready. Take a deep breath. Mark that question and skip it. Go to the next one. Do not dwell on a question. Please do not dwell on it. Okay, so here's the process. The first way, it's the given knowledge stage. It means that there's information that you're going to see in the question that you just know based on your experience, based on your hands-on training, based on the studying that you've done. That's what's so important about our Fast Tracks program. There's a method to the madness, and you start to gain this knowledge, and this is where it starts to show. So you will spend no more than one minute answering any given question in this first wave. Now, if you get to one minute and do not have the answer, and again, you'll have a little ticker up in the top. You can kind of just take a rough guess. When you get to that stage and you do not have the answer, then you're going to electronically mark it or tick it, and you're going to move on to the next question, okay? By marking it, it'll put it in this bank that you can come back and look at later when you're looking for the marked questions, okay? Now, you must answer these questions in this way based on your true knowledge. If you're answering a question and you answer it, but you're like, God, I think that's right, then that's not true knowledge. That's a guess. So go on and answer it, but I want you to mark it because you're going to hit it in the second wave to spend that extra amount of time, okay? Remember, this first wave is about marking them because, I mean, about answering them because you know the answer. It's something very simple that you have studied and you know how to answer that question, okay? If there's a guess element to it, mark it, and then you can skip, go to the next question, okay? Now, what is the goal of this first wave? This first wave's goal is to build what's called a repository of time for use with other questions when you get into the second wave or even the third wave, okay? That's what we need to do because those are waves, the second and third wave are more in-depth review waves. This first wave is simply doing what? Building you some extra time. For example, if you're based on the number of questions, based on the amount of time your test is, you're gonna have a certain amount of minutes per question. If you answer a bunch of the first wave questions because they're just knowledge things that you know, then guess what? You have built up a bank of time that you can use on other questions, okay? So that is the number one thing. Now, what I hear from my students is the number one thing that they come to me with is before they join our programs is they go, I ran out of time or I started getting down to the last 15 minutes and I had so many questions, I just started guessing. That is not what we want. So following this plan helps you have the best chance of success. So again, in that first wave, you're spending no more than a minute on each question. You're answering what you know, and you're not gonna second guess yourself. Answer what you know. You've studied, you're ready for this. What you don't know or is taking you over a minute, you mark it and you move to the next question. Now, here's a tip. If you're in a test that has both calculations mixed in with your uh, normal test, I'll give you an example. In Texas, the journeyman test for electricians has both the calculations and code answering type lookup questions in their test. However, their master exam is broken into two tests. You have a separate calculation test and you have a separate code lookup test. It's just testing your code knowledge, okay? Now, if you have the test that has them all mixed into one test, then skip your calculations until the third wave. That's it, okay? Just skip it till the third wave, okay? Like it says on the screen, the tip. Skip the calculations until wave three, unless the test is calculations only. If the test is calculations only, and you've already done the code knowledge portion, and you're just doing the calculations portion or a separate test with just calculations, then treat the calculations exam the same way as you would in this wave method. Just add an additional minute and a half to all of the minimums here. For example, if it's a lookup, we said one minute or less in wave one. If it's a calculations only exam in wave one, then it would be two and a half minutes that you're able to give yourself, okay? So that's the tip. But if you're taking an exam where calculations are intermixed with your code knowledge questions, then skip your calculation until wave three, okay? 
Focus on the code knowledge questions. That's the key, all right? All right, so this is what we're doing. We're trying to gain additional time. Next, let's look at wave two. Now, wave two is what we call the deeper dive stage. You've already gone through wave one. You've marked those questions that you couldn't answer in a minute, things that you just didn't know right off the top of your head, and now you're into what's called the deeper dive stage. Now, in this stage, you're answering the question that you electronically marked in wave one. On most uh, testing systems, you have the ability to look at the questions that have been marked only. So you can go back, anything you mark, later on you can go in and say, I just wanna look at the ones that are marked, okay? The ones that you actually check the little box to mark, okay? So in this case, in wave two, we're gonna be going through it, we're gonna be answering those questions that we marked from wave one. If you answer that question in, in uh, wave two and you answer it, and you don't wanna spend any more than two minutes before you move on to the next question. Now, if you answer that question within the two minutes, then you unmark it. If you are not able to answer that question in two minutes, leave it marked, go to the next question, because you're gonna tackle those marked ones again in the third wave, okay? And you'll be given a little more time, okay? So here, just don't forget that if you answer it in way two, unmark it. So you can leave the third wave for nothing but what's marked, okay? So as it says on here, the biggest difference here is that you must answer the question in this way based on your two-minute spot research, okay? That means that if you're answering this question, you didn't answer it in wave one because you just couldn't answer it in one minute or less. So in the two minutes, you're going to be answering this based on the research, the, the looking through the code, using the index, things like that, in that period. If you feel you're still guessing and that you're not really finding the answer, leave it marked. Go to the next question. Okay? Now, what is the goal of wave two? This is still a wave where we're building up some repository of time. Okay? So we're going to be building up because we're going to be doing not only this in-depth review of a deeper dive, but we're gonna go into wave three, which hopefully by this time, you have a allowable time that lets you spend a little extra time on each question. But by going through wave one, you're knocking down and you're building that repository. You go through wave two, you're spending the typical allotted time, most cases, for each question. But if you answer it quicker than that, you're still building a repository of time for wave three, okay? But two minutes, believe it or not, is a good amount of time if you use proper search techniques. We teach these search, search techniques in our Fast Tracks program and when I do my Wednesday night live class for my students. We go over how to dissect a question. We teach you how to use the index and when you need to use the index, when you know that it might have the answer there. But we also teach you how to dissect a question so that you know that there's no need to go to the index. Okay? We teach things like broad scanning or bold scanning. There's different techniques that we teach. Okay? But again, the process of the wave method is to get you through the process to build that extra time for the third wave. Okay? Wave three. Now, wave three is probably one of the most significant waves in this three-wave three process because by the time you've gotten to this point, like it says on the screen, at this stage, you are answering every question that you electronically marked okay, in wave one and the remaining that stayed marked in wave two. You must make sure that before you leave this question, okay, we're in wave three now, before you leave this question, you must give the answer. Now, remember what I did in wave one and wave two? I said, if you didn't get it, you'd go to the next question. In wave three, you must answer the question but you're still gonna have a time limit because we need you to focus on the actual questions that are remaining. So here's how it goes. In wave three, you must give an answer. If you still don't know the answer, then you have to take what's called an educated guess. Well, what's an educated guess? Well, usually in a four question multiple choice exam, you're gonna see a couple that are, no way it could be the right answer. So you can eliminate that. So you're increasing your odds. So where you have 25% chance of getting it right if you guess, you're reducing it down by getting rid of one of them, you raise it to a 33% chance of getting it right. If you remove another one, you have a 50-50 chance of getting it right. If at this stage you just can't find the answer, 
you might be able to, by this point, have an educated guess. But here's the thing. I need you to market, okay? I need you to market. And then, like it says here, you will spend no more than two minutes answering any given question in wave three stage. If you get to the two minutes and do not have an answer, keep the elect question electronically marked and move to the next question. But make sure you mark it, okay? Make sure you keep it marked, but make sure you answer the question, okay? And that means even if you have to do an educated guess, the key here is you must answer the question in this third wave, even if it's an educated guess and you leave it marked because if you got an extra time, you can go back over the questions that you marked and spend that remaining time because I want you to use every bit of time you have on your exam, okay? It's all about time management. Now, the goal of wave one and two is to build that time so that you can tackle it in wave three. Now, here's a tip. Relax. You got this. If you truly study, then you either know it or you don't at this stage in the testing game. If you don't know it, then our Fast Tracks program can help you. And it has helped literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people be successful on their exams because it's Nothing miraculously different about what we have in the industry. It's just how it's delivered that's different, okay? So let me do a summary, okay, before I go on to the last slide here for this presentation. Let me do a summary. Wave one, you're going to answer everything you know based on your knowledge, your training, your learning, um, common sense approaches to everything, and you're going to answer it in a minute or less. If you cannot answer it, you're going to mark it electronically, and you're gonna go on to the next question. If you can't answer that one in a minute, you're gonna mark it, you're gonna go on to the next one, okay? Answer everything you can in the first wave based as quick as you can on what you know. Not what you guess, but what you know. Then go to wave two. Once you get through all the questions in wave one, you start back over and you're gonna to go to all the ones that you marked. Remembering to skip calculations unless it's two separate exams. If there's calculations involved in your normal knowledge-based exam, like most journeyman's tests are, then you're going to skip the calcs until the last wave where you've built up that extra time to work on them, okay? All right, so wave one, go through it, mark them. Don't spend more than a minute. Wave two, you're gonna go through it. And like I said in wave two, and I'll go back so you can see it right here. In wave two, no more than two minutes on each question. If you can't answer it in two minutes, you mark it. You move on to the next one, okay? Now, if you happen to answer one, from stage one to stage two, make sure you unmark it because you don't wanna be going over things that you've already answered, okay? That's important, you're building up that time. And like I said here, the wave three, again, you're gonna spend no more than two minutes on a question, but when you get to that two minutes, you either have the answer or you don't, then you have to make an educated guess, but I want an answer. Now, if you answer it, you can still leave it marked if you're unsure because you can always come back and look at it again but right now, answer it before you move to the next question. You got two minutes. What I don't want you to do is get locked on a question and five to 10 minutes later, you're still trying to find a question. Because at the end of the day, you need to answer all these questions. You don't leave any blank because if they're blank, they're automatically wrong. You get no chance if it's left blank, right? So I don't want any blank questions. So again, wave one, answer what you know. Don't spend more than a minute. Wave two, no more than two minutes. If you can't answer it, mark it, go to the next question. Wave three, you should have built up some extra time. No more than two minutes on a question. If you get to the end of that two minutes, you must make an educated guess. If you still don't feel right, leave it marked and go to the next question uh, and then move your way successively through it. So some people can say, well, Paul, isn't that really like a wave four and a wave five and a wave six? No, three waves of constructive uh, approach. Anything after that, you're just filling time because by the end of three waves, you should have all of your questions answered. Now, some of them you still might be iffy on because you ultimately had to guess at the end and made an educated guess, but you're not gonna leave any questions blank, okay? And one thing about this is as you're looking for things, you'd be surprised you'll find answers to other questions that you marked because you still weren't sure, okay? So that's the key. Move through it in those different waves, okay? All right, lastly, um, I can tell you right now that, that a lot of our students, 
or we're very successful, go through our Fast Tracks program. If you want to learn a structured manner to, to understand the NEC, and you want to join us on our Zoom training classes that are only available to my students, then think about joining our program. It's the most affordable in the industry. You're not going to spend over $1,000 for books and videos with nobody to help hold your hand and, and answer those technical questions. You're not going to buy just books off of Amazon that really gives you no instructor-led information. You're just assuming it's right. And also, you got to question if the question's even right on the in the book, because there's a lot of errors in books. So you have nobody to ask. In our program, I am there. I am always available. I answer my emails. I answer my calls. I answer my texts. You're able to bring any question to our live sessions. And in our live sessions, I answer those questions for you. Okay, now, the, the live sessions are not part of the program. That is something that I like to do for my students. And it's typically on Wednesday nights. Um, so if you're interested in that and you want somebody to help you be successful, then I encourage you to visit masterthenec.com and you'll see a link at the top navigation called Fast Track Exam Preparation. Click on that, watch the demo video, and you can see what makes our programs different. Uh, it is truly a different way because I just don't want to teach you to pass an exam. I want to teach you how to know and retain the National Electrical Code. That's my goal, okay? So hopefully you got something out of that and uh, you have a new approach to how you target electrical exams. So hopefully I've helped you a little bit with that. Till next time, folks, stay safe. God bless. Shut up and sit down.